no decisions have been made as to exactly how large the facility is going to be, how many stories it's going to be, uh, and the general makeup of that. And then there was some discussion, too, about ownership of it. And again, I'll segue into that if I'm talking about as well go into that. Did you have you certainly have the opportunity for the city to own the project and for the city to manage the project. Generally speaking, and it's my opinion, and I think it's borne out, and Joe could even speak to this, if the city owns and manages the, the entire project going forward, you're going to run into some obstacles um, that are going to relate to uh, competitive bidding in that, um, of course, this project will probably be required to be prevailing wage because there will be there will actually be tax revenues um, and city revenues that are going through that. Um, the sale and the lease of the project, typically in the state of Ohio, in that that has to be bid um, in that, um, or there has to be an auction of that for the city to do that under any general circumstance. If it's transferred over to the CIC, the CIC doesn't have that same requirement. They can actually take proposals. They can actually hire a professional to go out and market the property um, differently than, than the city would do. So that in itself, just the process associated with that generally lends most communities to transfer the ownership to a CIC. Because the CIC also is generally a quasi-governmental organization, an arm of the city, and they take direction from the city typically on what to do. The other thing in, in that is that this is probably, if it's going to be more than just a government building, in that if you're going to have a retail center, potentially um, residential facilities in that, it's going to be income producing in that as well. And the income could then be um, a actually contracted to the CIC, and then the CIC could then direct that income to the city is a contract payment as opposed to a, a direct payment that would be a typical um, uh, tax, generally speaking, um, for that. So there's a, a significant advantage to doing that. But it, it, at this point, really, you know, as we said, the architect has been identified for the project if, it, if the city is going to move forward in a CM at risk on that. No decision has been made as to you know whether or not the uh, uh, the city uh, city hall is going to be on the first floor, second floor. If it's going to be one story, four story, six story, twenty story facility, in that in any regard, um, but a lot of that is going to be you know ferreted out, and that direction will be given to the the CIC or the city going through the process because you certainly have a finite finite uh, lot size here. And in order to make sure that there's going to be um, the ability to have um, some type of commercial activity on this, you have to have the parking for that, and parking is certainly is a premium in, in the city of Loveland. So that all is going to be in consideration of you know how much density you could have on that. The other thing that is, you know, I think there was some talk about is maybe minimizing the risk of selling the project to a, a private developer. And you certainly could do that. The, the, the issue with that is one, you know, the, the positive side is you, you will um, limit and you will identify your risk on that because you're going to sell the property for a specific dollar value and from that point forward you generally lose control of that outside of the zoning or any restrictions you put on it for the sale. However, if the city maintains it through the CIC, um, generally speaking, uh, they're, they're going to get a city hall that is going to generate revenue or a building that's going to generate revenue. And the actual footprint of the facility and the, the parcel, the cost to maintain that are going to be distributed among all of the other tenants within that facility, so there will be less cost generally to to the city and to the CIC because you're going to be able to distribute those costs, uh, the, the maintenance of the, uh, of the parking lot, the general overall maintenance of the facility, you'll be able to distribute that among all of the tenants 
within that facility um, while also having an income producing uh, box for for the city to to have the other thing is dave said is you're going to bring in you know the potential for new revenue of you know new employees into that facility uh new uh, corporate you know revenue and, and then quality of life issues that you wouldn't necessarily have if you just left left this facility as a government city hall today today i mean this this parcel is city hall nothing wrong with that but if you repurpose this facility you make it uh, something that is going to work efficiently for today's <coughs> Uh, today's operation and with the uh, the thought of going forward on that you also would have the ability to add other amenities that the city would think would be appropriate for that so that is kind of in a nutshell to where we are right now yeah I think um, and Jay you might want to guide this you know each of you bring different experience to the table but as you can see each of those options that we just discussed have pros and cons and um, one of the things that City Council challenged itself to do is not only to repurpose the building but to create a revenue source I think that's something to keep in mind and Pam correct me if I'm wrong but you were you were part of the retreat but one of the things was to not only as Dave keeps pointing out the highest best use of the property but to, to create some revenue because we do have this I like the term front yard. We have this front yard out there that's not being utilized to the best of its ability. We have a backyard that could be adding additional parking. Um, if we could accomplish everything in one, what would it look like? And, um, you know, uh, Carl, you bring experience as a developer. You know that it is possible to do a four story project and sell off two stories of that and get revenue for that. We also know we could do one story of residential and sell that off and get revenue for that. The only difference between a three story and a four story or a two story and a three story, whatever story you look at, is how long it's going to take us to pay off the debt and how, how much we spend on the project. Um, the other nice thing is that you know with the, with the inception of the Loveland Station project, and my firm was here when we did the Loveland Station project, is no one could have realized, and, and maybe, maybe counsel did in their wisdom, but um, just the outside observer could not have realized how successful the commercial component of that would be, where there were people they had to turn away. I remember a specific meeting where they gave a list of people they turned away to, to lease out on the first floor of that. So our hope would be that some of those might want to rent space um, in this new development on the first floor. Or, you know, and, and Dave, as part of the State of the City, talked about the fact that we've repurposed a lot of buildings. You know, the city's trying to do everything it can to promote responsible de um, development and redevelopment in the city. This is one step toward that. And really, your recommendation needs to keep that in mind. You know, um, maybe you don't even say um, exactly what city council ought to do, but you say, we would like to see a, something that has residential, commercial, and the governmental component. You could be more specific and say, we'd like to see three floors, one of each, you know, four floors, two, one, and three, whatever you decide. But um, one of the other things that's important, and Rob, Rob talked about it, we now have this architect who's got this great idea of how they can do it. They've talked about a time frame, a blueprint, you know, they're ready to go. So that, that component solved in our minds. But what we're going to task them with designing isn't. Um, there's a lot of blank pages that need to be filled in. And, uh, that's one of the reasons we're really asking you. Yeah. Well, one of the questions I have, by the way, Joe, I don't think counsel and wisdom have ever been used in the same <laughs> <laughs> But I thank you for that. Um, I guess my question is, is since obviously this is, you know, this is really where you guys are, are key, um, is how do you start that conversation? Because, you know, when I look at this, and I'm just looking at it now not as a council member, I'm looking at it as a taxpayer as a resident of Loveland. Um, I would love to see not a four-story building. Um, I've never been a, a fan of a four-story building. I don't particularly want to be in the real estate um, uh, management business as far as apartments and condos. I would much rather you know, see a building that is, uh, number one, to the street, because as you said, we have a lot of front yard that, quite frankly, we don't use. 
Um, and I think, you know, what would be nice based upon uh, with Loveland Station and, and how successful the commercial space has been, um, you know, having retail in the, in, on the first floor, maybe two very highly visible restaurants and then retail in the back, uh, City Hall on the second, and, um, you know, if we have the need for a third floor, um, and once again, we'd have to look at finances and things like that. Um, personally, what I would like to see is something that's built more around um, the community and its needs, and maybe have something that on the third floor could be something like a um, meeting room, or if you get married at City Hall, you can go have your reception upstairs and maybe have part of it enclosed, part of it outside, where you could have, you know, a party and you can take advantage of all the, you know, sides and sounds. There's a bar or restaurant. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it could even be if you had a restaurant on the first floor, um, and if they wanted to maybe lease the space out for their own patio space up there. Um, I, I, I personally would prefer to have something that is a mixture of retail, city hall still down there, but also have something that the community can also um, look at and say, hey, you know, I'd like to have a graduation party up there, or I'd like to, you know, something that still brings people downtown. So that's my two cents. That is strictly not as a council member. Um, that is strictly as a resident. Right. And, and I'll...